Hey kids, it's the Mist and Flyers here. Welcome to Japan. Well folks, who would have thought it? Me and Mrs. Flyer riding a motorcycle in the environs of Tokyo in this beautiful countryside on a big bike tour in Japan. Over the next few weeks, we're gonna take you through the sights and sounds that this amazing country has to offer. Everything from local hotels. So after one has enjoyed a hearty meal and made oneself comfortable in the facilities, it's time for the buzzing metropolises. Amazing temples. Beautiful views. Well, how about this for a photo stop? Bikes in front of Mount Fuji at sunset, eh? Motorcycle and food culture. Good. Basically everything you ever wanted to know about Japan and a few things you didn't as well, probably. Okay. <gasps> Totally pleasant. They're going to be in this next tour series. So stick around, stay tuned. We'll wind back about three weeks at the very start of this newest tour. Well, welcome to beautiful Fujinon, folks. Just check out where we are here. This is the nerve center of UB Touring, who we're riding with. Just look at this scenery here. So when you come here, uh, this is uh, where the bikes and so on are based. Let me show you the bikes that we're on. This is our bike, we're just packing this up actually, ready to go, but as you can see, Triumph Tiger 900, the beautiful green Rally Po version. Got the old Insta360 set up and just loading up bits and pieces here. This is gonna be the lead bike that uh, Wes, our tour leader, is on. I'll introduce you to Wes in a moment. Uh, another Triumph Tiger 900, as you can see, and this is the nerve center of UB Touring. Here we go. And uh, let me just introduce you to Wes. Hey, Wes, just uh, saying, Hello, basically, the folks. Hey, how are you how doing? doing, Andy? I don't know if it's a bit dark in here, but so in here, this is basically storage for helmets, jackets. Anyway, looking forward. This is going to be a great trip. We've got some great stuff planned, haven't we? We do. It's going to be 14, 15 days, yep. about like that. Yep. Um, and it's a trip, this time a custom trip that uh, Andy and I put together, together. Uh, well, over a course of about a year, I think. Yeah, actually, it might have be been longer because we started thinking about this before COVID, didn't we? And we got stymied by that, didn't we? So it's been a long time coming. It has been. We probably started communicating about two years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And finally, yeah. with the COVID restrictions removed, uh, we can go about touring Japan. All right, so welcome back to the channel for what is going to be something quite special and quite exotic for the next few weeks. I'm going to be uploading some episodes from this latest tour on the Missenden Flyer where we're riding in Japan. Just look at this scenery, absolutely incredible. Cannot wait to see what Japan has to offer. My old mate Bruce Teapot won when he did his uh, round the world trip. He always said that Japan was his favourite country and somewhere that he felt quite at home in and would be happy to live. And uh, I have to say, so far, I tend to agree. We got here about uh, ooh, four days ago, three or four days ago, and we've spent a few days acclimatising in Tokyo. What an incredible place that is. In fact, we're riding at the moment, we're just uh, about an hour and a half to the uh, west of Tokyo and we're heading back south of Tokyo to catch a ferry today so today's riding is not going to be much it's already sort of evening time when I'm recording this but yeah getting back to Tokyo itself what a mad city 34 million people live there the biggest uh, city in the world in fact in terms of population not in terms of geographical size but it's certainly pretty big it makes London feel decidedly like a village we had a great time there went uh, did all the sites some incredible places lots of people we saw all sorts of wild things on the streets, it was brilliant. But mostly we were there just to acclimatise and get over the jet lag. Because of course, it's right around the other side of the world, Japan. And uh, that meant a 15 hour flight to get here. So I'd say we're pretty much over the jet lag now. Although I'm feeling pretty tired, I'll be glad to see my bed tonight. And today, as I say, just a short ride to a ferry terminal just to the south of Tokyo. I thought it was a good opportunity to get familiar with the bike, show you some of these initial scenes of Japan. And uh, given we're recording this in October, the weather is just absolutely spectacular. It's been about 25 degrees today. And although it's um, around about five o'clock in the evening now, 
it's still about 23 it's beautiful to be riding in this weather at this time of year all right so we're nowhere near the ferry yet but i couldn't resist turning the camera back on just because the scenery here is amazing we're not that far as i say west of tokyo only about an hour and uh, the scenery is is like this out here just incredible japan is of course a very mountainous country looking forward to seeing a lot of that on this trip over the next few episodes which are going to intersperse and i think i'm going to do them every other video i always get comments about if i'm you know doing it wrong by posting my videos one after the other if i'm on tour whether i should intersperse them with other videos so i'm going to do that and so uh, the next episode of this video will be the one after next if that makes sense anyway just a bit of housekeeping so so far so good with the riding you'll notice here in japan that we're riding on the left makes a bit of a chat treat doesn't it a bit of a change when you come somewhere abroad and you ride on the same side as us brits so that makes life a bit easier what doesn't make life easier is the fact that uh, there are some differences in the riding one or two road signs things like that i mean the the signage themselves looks much the same as i'm used to but obviously i can't read the words on them so the one that's uh, interesting for example is a stop sign if i get a chance to show you one i will i assume it says stop on it but it's not in any sense that i can understand it and also things like the speed cameras tend to be a little bit different again if i spot any of those i'll point them out and it's a matter of getting used to that a few other biking types i don't know what the etiquette is here for waving or nodding at other bikers we shall find out in due course right it's a monday evening when i'm recording this so it could well be that we get a bit stuck in traffic south of tokyo have i mentioned how busy tokyo is okay so we're making some progress now wind on about uh, 45 minutes or so we've been uh, stuck going around the eastern side of tokyo there's some quite heavy traffic and it was a quite slow stop start stuff but uh, things are moving again now a bit i glad to say in the main things move on these expressways given how busy and how big tokyo is which is off to my left uh, the fact that we're doing this is in kilometers 62 kilometers an hour isn't too bad and according to the sat nav on the phone i've got here uh, we've only got 24 minutes to go so not doing too badly but i just put the camera on here because uh, we're just sort of southwest of tokyo now and uh, in some cities in japan you're not allowed to ride pillion uh, or not allowed to ride two up in the cities and tokyo is one of them so we've had to come around the outskirts so i can't show you the center of tokyo on the bike uh, but around the outskirts here on the southwestern part is a place called Kawasaki not too far from Yokohama two places or Yokohama two places that uh, you know for most motorsport enthusiasts myself included means something anyway time is now 1648 according to the uh, temperature gauge it's still 25 degrees speaking around about uh, I don't know well, 23 minutes now when we get towards towards the ferry embarkation and then we'll check out what the uh, what the ferry's got for us still nowhere near the ferry but i just had to turn the camera on to show you this flyover uh, as is often the case i didn't turn the camera on quick enough because before the, the flyover there was a really complicated junction it like made spaghetti junction look like the crossroads in great missenden which is very good but uh, just to, i don't know if you can see it on the camera but just a great view here the sort of part of the tokyo skyline it's such an amazing city here obviously it's getting dark so you may not see it great on the gopro and also it's, it's a way away so it might shrink it but uh, what an incredible place what we learned in that period when we were here is that uh, tokyo really is a set of cities that have all been subsumed into each other we stayed in a place called shibuya and uh, which is where that mad scramble is where you cross the road everybody crosses the road at the same time in fact it's called the scramble fascinating place to stay anyway we're heading towards the ferry i'll turn the camera back on when we get close so it seems the tokyo traffic is conspiring against us we're uh, we've been stuck in traffic now for ages and uh, i can't remember what time the ferry goes but it's five past six now i've got a feeling it's getting a bit touch and go not only that i've got a tire sensor come up saying i've got a front or possibly it's the sensor i don't know but uh, anyway it's all getting a bit exciting now 
All right, so I'm glad to say we made it to the ferry terminal. We've just gone and got our tickets and got some ID. We put Carol on the back of Wes's bike for this, just because I'm carrying more weight on here with bigger panniers for the two of us. And now we're going to get on the ferry. We've got, uh, what's the time? Actually, we've got about half an hour until departure, so got away with it. But it could be slippy on here, and this bike is laden. Well, it's always very exciting getting on board ferries. Right, we'll get on, get the bike tied down. See you on board. Oh, turns out you can't ride on with two people anyway. <laughs> Fair enough. So, as luck would have it, we made it onto the ferry. It's just left. We had uh, about 10 minutes to spare in the end. Uh, we've got ourselves a cabin. Where's got the short straw and he's in a little pod down the way. But anyway, this is the cabin. We've got a couple of pull down beds here. Uh, so it's a bit like being on a train and out here is, uh, well, not much of a view, just reflection. Anyway, we're gonna get our heads down, get some to eat and uh, we'll see you back on the bike in the morning. Hopefully another sunny day. Yay. All right, so not quite on the bike yet, but we're just coming into dock, having been on the ferry for, what have we been on here, Carol? 18 hours we've been on here, so I just want to show out the windows we're coming in. We're coming into um, Southern Island of uh, Japan, I think it's called Tokushiwa, something like that. Apologies if I'm getting that wrong. Anyway, here's the view out the window. As you can see, another absolutely beautiful day. It's been a fun time here on the ferry. We um, slept. Interestingly, I mean, as you do on ferries, engine noise, but it was, it was calm as a mill pond, yeah, though, wasn't it? it was uh, and uh, it's been it's been pretty good, good crossing as they go anyway. But looking forward to getting back on the bike and uh, exploring some local territories. Alrighty, let's exit this ferry. Never an easy time. Oh, round we go, heavy bike. That's the slippery bit, I hope. There's Mrs. Flyer, not allowed to uh, ride out with a pillion. Which is fair enough. Okay, welcome folks to Tokushima. Well, at least that's the, uh, the name of the town that we're near. Now, Wes uh, told me this is a big uh, paper making area. And as a result, there's a lot of industry here. And actually, although this uh, southern island of, I think it's called Shikugu, 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 uh, is actually beautiful and kind of wildernessy. This particular part where we've just got off the ferry is full of industry and uh, it's pretty horrible, he, is how he described it. Uh, so I sort of said, so I can think of it as the Japanese version of Slough. So no offence to anyone who lives in Slough or indeed who lives in, uh, I can't, I've already forgot the name of this place. Anyway, Apologies to any Japanese viewers that I'm absolutely mullering the names of your towns, prefectures, islands, etc. But they are quite uh, difficult for Western tongues to get around. Anyway, we're heading off now for a uh, our first little waypoint. One of the great things about this tour that Wes has put together for us is he's built in an awful lot of stops at waypoints of interest. So this first one we're heading to is uh, a meeting point of two sea flows, one from the north, one from the south, and because of the way that the currents work, lots of eddies occur there, and it's in a place in Japan where you can see these eddies, I don't know if they're like whirlpools or, or what, but we'll see when we get there, anyway, that's where we're heading, bit of, uh, I think a bit of grim riding to get there, after that all is well and we're in the countryside mountains and all that and plenty to look forward to, so uh, yeah, speak to you and on. Quick pop over the Yoshinagawa River, I love a bridge me, and this one is pretty impressive. Now this particular island we're on at the moment is quite inaccessible to the rest of Japan so uh, it's not the sort of place that many people actually go to on tour because to get here you have to cross either a road bridge which is often closed because of the wind certainly it's closed to motorcycles quite a lot or you have to get that ferry so uh, I think where we're going to be heading over the next few days is actually a real treat there's lots of shrines and things there I think it's a very mountainous area 
and it's somewhere that uh, every you know Japanese people regard as very beautiful and it's not somewhere touristy so they're going to get to see the real Japan over the next few days I'm sure right down to some uh, hotels and things that I think we're going to find quite different so uh, yeah really looking forward to experiencing some of that completely different culture just come up to a toll here there's lots of tolls on this bike we've got one of those little ticket things so if we go through the purple one with ETC written at the top it'll automatically theoretically open and through we go so let's give it a try yep stay it open that's the way to do it right onwards Right, we've managed to park the bikes up and we've stopped where the uh, whirlpools live. And uh, the big bridge we saw earlier, we've, we're sort of next to it here, this expressway. Loud bus. And apparently the whirlpool viewing area is underneath that, so we're going to go and check that out now. Right, whereas while we're wandering over to the uh, viewpoint thing, I'm com always mashing up the Japanese language as I talk on the bike, although luckily the last couple of files no sound came out, so maybe I didn't. But can you sure. remind me, what is the name of this island and what is the name of this prefecture? Right, so the name of this island is Shikoku. Shikoku. There are four major islands in Japan. Yep. Hokkaido, Honshu, Shikoku, and Kyushu. Shikoku uh, is probably one of the least accessible. Um, most of the transport comes over by only three bridges that connect from Honshu into Shikoku. Yep. Uh, the bullet train doesn't run here. We uh, ended up having to take the ferry over here. Indeed we did. Yep. And the reason why we depended on the ferry was, first of all, because of jet lag. <laughs> yeah, but second true. of all, because the closest bridge that goes from Kobe into Tokushima on the island of Shikoku is often closed to motorcycles when there's heavy wind. Right. So it's not a good bridge to depend on when we're out motorcycle touring. There it is. And a prefecture yes. is like an administrative district, isn't it? So the, which it prefecture are we in here? So this is the prefecture of Tokushima. There are four prefectures on the island of Shikoku. Tokushima... You're following this, kids. Carry on. <laughs> Tokushima, Kagawa, Kochi, and Ehime. And tonight we're going to be staying in Kagawa. Yeah, so we're not here very that long, are we? Just for this stop, basically. Shikoku, unfortunately, we're just going to be passing through very briefly. We're here to see some naturally occurring whirlpools in the ocean. And then we're going to be staying overnight in um, Kagawa. Looking forward to that. Right, to the yes. whirlpools then. To the whirlpools. That's the bridge that we're about to walk under. That's correct. There's a pedestrian walkway just underneath this expressway bridge. So we've made it onto the observation deck. Here's Carol. I think this might be your first appearance in this video, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. I think it might be. Anyway, okay. Or did we do a room tour? I can't remember. Anyway, we're on the observation deck and, uh, well, we're looking at whirlpools. Check these out. <laughs> So we're on the walkway and there's uh, various viewpoints out of here, but just check out this one here. I'll put up a shot from my iPhone. There's a boat struggling there with the currents and the eddies that it's fighting with. Not quite a whirlpool, but nonetheless, still pretty impressive stuff. And uh, I think this walkway extends for about 500 meters, so we might get a better view in a minute. So as we came in, Wes had a chat to the man that knows. So what causes these uh, eddies in, Wes? The Pacific Ocean loops around the island of Shikoku from the one direction. <laughs> and, You're going to go left or right then, wouldn't you? And it comes, yeah, it's not necessarily <laughs> left or right, is it? And it comes directly from the Pacific Ocean northward up Shikoku on the other side. So the tide coming in from one direction around Shikoku and coming up from the bottom of Shikoku mixes at it, this it, point, basically. It, it mixes directly at this point and it creates a, a, a step change in the height of the water. So as those two bodies of water collide at different heights, yeah. then it naturally creates these eddies. Which look and pretty it's the only like. location in Japan that this happens. And it's the only place I can think of in the world, but correct us if, if we're wrong in the comments. I'd be fascinated to know. So, Carol, you're a lover of heights, aren't you? What do you think of this uh, little walkway and the uh, whirlpools? Impressive, huh? The whirlpools are great. It's a fabulous structure. No, I don't like heights, and you know I don't. Oh, so I'm walking along really gingerly, being a right timid man. And never mind the whirlpools, but the actual structure itself is pretty impressive, isn't it? Yeah. Look at it. <laughs> 
So you may have noticed as we're wandering around here looking at whirlpools and things that how me and Carol are walking about, in fact we all are, without our helmets, jackets, etc. One of the incredible things about Japan is there seems to be pretty much no crime, hence why we heard no sirens when we were in Tokyo and so on. Uh, so we've left our bikes probably a quarter of a mile away, our jackets are on them, our helmets are on them, our helmets have got intercoms on, got my camera on, our passports are on the bikes. Thank goodness this isn't going out live. But anyway, basically, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm assured by Wes that uh, that stuff is absolutely going to be there. And he said he would pay us twice the money if they disappeared. OK, we're off from the Whirlpool stroke eddy current place. Didn't really see any what I would call classic whirlpools, but I can imagine in certain conditions you do get them there. But nonetheless, very, very impressive. Right. Next stop is a temple on the way to our hotel. It's not very far away, but uh, hopefully it should be quite interesting. It's so warm here still today. It's, uh, what, uh, 28 degrees according to the bike, and it feels about that. It's uh, about three o'clock in the afternoon. It's the middle of October. Incredibly warm. We've come all uh, ruckered up because we're expecting some rain potentially in the tour at some point, but uh, actually no sign at all of that at the moment, of course. Absolutely beautiful. Some amazing roads as we uh, work our way up the mountain slightly. Sun's in our eyes, so uh, hopefully you can see okay, but uh, I haven't said that, I can't really, because the sun is in my eyes. But yeah, it's been a beautiful road, this one. Surfaces in Japan, I would say, well, the main roads like this, surfaces are brilliant. But once you get off the beaten track a little bit, they can be a little bit broken up. Very much like home in that respect. Some road markings that I'm not uh, so familiar with there. Basically, I think they were rumble strips. Right, we've got a bit of bridge action coming up. Oh, just look at this, folks. Absolutely stunning. these little boats out here and this harbour. Wow, what a view, eh? What a beautiful country. Another bridge for the lads. Love a bit of bridge action. And all the front tyre sensors come on again. We did check the tyres earlier. The tyres are absolutely fine. Obviously got an issue with the sensor on this one. Battery running a bit low or something. Sometimes the technology on these bikes can be more trouble than they're worth. Don't ask me how I know. So if you're wondering about biker etiquette here, by the way, uh, we have seen a few bikers. There's not many on this road at the moment, but uh, I'm sure we'll see more later. Uh, obviously, Japan does have a big biking culture. And uh, just like every other country I've ever ridden in, it's all very friendly. So we wave at each other on the roads when you see another bike here in Japan. It's sort of a left hand wave as opposed to a, a nod of the hand, a nod of the head rather. So, uh, yeah, it's all very friendly. It's good stuff. Oh, look at this bridge. Oh. Well, there we go, case in point. Man on sports bike waved at us.